can see any noticeable difference in speed, I'm going about 20. Oh! For many of us mountain bikers, using an action cam or a GoPro has helped us share some of our best memories with friends and family all around the world. But with that being said, in the last few years, as the image quality and the stabilization has improved, we have seen some cameras struggling to keep up on the standpoint of overheating, general bugginess, or just chewing through batteries like crazy. So in the last few months, we were pretty excited when we saw a lot of our mountain bike friends reviewing this, which is the DJI Osmo Action 3. It claims to address many of the issues with overheating, battery life, and general just ease of use. Overall, we've been very impressed with this camera, but when it comes to low light situations, it just couldn't really hang with the GoPro. And so we found ourselves on brighter days, we would grab this camera and use it for that. And then if it was kind of spotty light or a little bit darker day, we'd grab the GoPro just because it provided better image quality. With that being said though, a few weeks ago, DJI reached out and they asked if we wanted to test out this camera, which is the Osmo Action 4. It essentially maintains the same form factor and magnetic mount, which we really loved as the Osmo Action 3 but it comes with a much bigger image sensor. A bigger sensor allows the camera to bring in more light and it also improves something called dynamic range, which is essentially how much difference the camera can see between the brightest part of the image and the darkest part of the image. This camera has a one inch over 1.3 sensor. The GoPro is a one over 1.9 and the Osmo Action 3 was a one over 1.7. So over the last few weeks, I've been testing this camera out. We did a trip to Bellingham, Washington. We went up to British Columbia and we even just spent quite a bit of time testing it here in Boise. Towards the end of the video, I will give you all of my loves and hates with this camera and tell you if it's worth buying or not. But for right now, I wanna head out to the trail and see if you guys can see a difference with a head head comparison between the Osmo Action 4 and the GoPro 11. As you can see right now, I have them set up on a dual mount so we can kind of get a comparison of the angle and everything. And uh, I do have a wind slayer or this foam cover set up on both of them, but I will do some tests throughout this video with the raw audio with no wind slayer on either. The Osmo Action 4 with the larger sensor should really shine in the low light or spotted light conditions. And there is a little bit of trees here, so we'll kind of get a chance to see that. But for the most part, it'll be out in the open and we'll be able to see if there's much of a resolution difference between the two. So with that being said, let's jump into it and start riding. Like I said, the only spotted light section is right up here through these woods. We'll kind of see how the cameras do there. I'm really interested to see the difference. So here's some shadows with spotted light. We'll see if you can see the difference between the two cameras. is sandy ah, sorry motor noise is loud my heart still isn't doing the best all the time so i have been kind of riding the e-bike a lot lately it seems like since summer came around i've been struggling a bit so for anyone who's hating on it <laughs> i uh have been on the struggle bus a bit lately so that's why i'm on the e-bike too okay so we're at the top basically and uh you may be able to see a difference in the field of view so the osmo action force supposed to have a slightly wider field of view we'll see if you can see that versus the GoPro 11. And then we'll go back to the Osmo Action 4. I have both of these set to 30 frames per second. We'll see if you can notice any difference in motion blur, if you can notice any difference in speed, quality, stabilization. I have it on a chin mount just because it's a little easier to uh, keep stable than a chest mount, but a lot of times I will use a chest mount as well. I have them set up pretty similar. They're both set at 5000 Kelvin white balance. They both have a standard stabilization, not boost both on 4 over 3 aspect ratio, the Osmo Action 4 is shooting 4K, the GoPro is shooting 5K, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So, let's get it started. This section up here is pretty gnarly actually, so, <laughs> this little section is kind of gnarly, I always... If you're racing it, you just pin it, but when I'm just riding for fun by myself, I'll just kind of chill for a sec. It's pretty loose. Oh! That's a good moto hill climb that a lot of guys do. If you can see any noticeable difference in speed, I'm going about 23 miles an hour right now. This is the Osmo Action 4. This is the GoPro 11. Let's see if you can see any difference there. And again, stabilization too. If you notice any kind of bobbing or anything like that. Also, if you do see any shadowed parts, see if you can notice a difference in the shadow detail. 
the uh, Osmo Action 4 is supposed to have a little bit more dynamic range. I think half a stop with dynamic range more, which it actually feels like more than that to me. Um, especially when you go through a section that's speckled light. So they keep going to a bigger sensor, lets more light in, has better dynamic range, lets for a bigger aperture. All kinds of benefits of that. If you hear a knocking sound, I'm sorry. This is kind of an awkward setup with two cameras. It's so heavy on my helmet and it jiggles a bit more than I'm used to. But uh, yeah, hopefully it turns out good. Just so you can kind of see back to back. I have been switching between the audios as well and the camera. So if you kind of look at the bottom corner of the screen, there should be which audio it's coming from. They both sound great to me, honestly, um, especially with the wind slayer on. With the wind slayer off, it's not nearly as good. So this is a test of the GoPro raw audio right now. So I'm just climbing. GoPro audio, not too windy, not too fast right now. And now we're switching over to the DJI audio. So again, just climbing, not too windy, not too fast. It's just what it would sound like if you're talking to the microphone without any covering at all. So here's an audio test of the GoPro on the way down the hill. Still not going too fast from around 12 miles an hour, but just cruising. You can probably hear some wind noise. Um, this is where I think the Osmo has become a little bit better. So now I'm testing the Osmo. And you can kind of hear that as well. I think the Osmo has surpassed the GoPro when it comes to uh, raw audio. And when you have the wind slayer or kind of the foam covering on, it sounds really good. So I'll do some tests with that as well on the way down. Now we get to party. <laughs> Again, if you hear any clunking, I'm sorry, that's not normal. That's just the mount hitting my helmet. Man, this trail has gotten so rough. Every time I ride it, I feel like it gets rougher and rougher. This is a moto trail too, so I have to be careful with people coming up. A lot of guys hill climb on this, but uh, it's a really popular mountain bike trail as well. Oh! He good? Sorry about that. You got somebody else? No, just one. Thank you. Woo! That was wild. That's what I'm always worried about on this trail. That's why, even though you can go faster on it, I try to kind of be smart on it because that is actually two for two. Last time I rode this trail, I also had a moto encounter. That was pretty insane. Uh, almost died a few times. I'm gonna do one last little test. I'm gonna pull the GoPro off put the Osmo Action 3 on and see if we can see a difference there. And uh, yeah, see how it goes. All right, so there's not much trail left, but I wanted to do a little test and see if you could see a difference between the Osmo Action 4 and the Osmo Action 3. But there should be a little bit of a difference. Um, we'll see if you can see image quality, color. They're both set at the same white balance, same field of view, aspect ratio, everything. So they should be exactly the same. The only difference is essentially the sensor. We'll do a little bit of climbing with this too. So here's a good example of spotted light, dark to bright. We'll see if you can see a difference in the dynamic range. So again, let's go up here. There's another shadowed section. So what you're really looking for is a difference between the, the brightest bright and the darkest dark. And the way cameras work is they preserve a lot more detail in the darkness in the low lights than they do in the highlights. If you have a highlight that's overexposed, a lot of times that information is lost and it's just seeing it as pure white. And at least in the shadows, there's a lot of information that's still there, even if it looks dark. So it's much easier to pull up a dark spot than it is to bring down a bright spot. All right, let's wrap. Let's head back to the studio and debrief. All right, I'm really curious to see what you think after the head-to-head -head comparison on the trail. I feel like the camera looks really great. There's a huge improvement over the Osmo Action 3, and I feel like it's really similar or kind of better in some ways than the GoPro. I do like the wider field of view as well. 
And after spending a few weeks with it in general, I do have kind of a list of loves and hates. It's not totally perfect, but I wanna kind of go through the loves first and then we'll go through the hates. The number one thing that I absolutely love the most is the quick mounting system because what it allows you to do is you can kind of set and forget your angle. So I know that with this setting, I'm gonna get good footage every time. The camera's not too low, not too high. And if I need to pull the battery out or if I need to take it inside or charge it or change the memory card, all I have to do is basically press this button, pull the camera off, helmet goes away, then you can play with the camera or move it to a different mount, and that setting is always there. The other thing I really love about the magnetic mount is that with this little case, you basically just throw the camera in here, pop that shut, and then you have the ability to mount vertically. So that's vertical mode, ready to go. I can shoot uh, short form content, and then you basically just go like that. Now you have horizontal mode, you're ready to do a YouTube video or anything like that. The interface is so much better from a mounting standpoint with the GoPro. If I wanna take this off and put it on a different mount or anything, I need to go like this, unscrew it, pull that out, pull this off, go over to my next mount, put it back on, screw it down, and then hope, hope that the angle is the same and hasn't changed. But like I said with this, if I wanna change it, all I have to do is go like this, pop it off, put my other mount on, ready to go. So it just makes it so much faster, easier, and it helps you get a better angle more often. So that's really great. So another thing that I absolutely love about this camera is the quickness of the software interface and the custom modes you can set up. Plus you can turn on or off a voice of the custom modes, which is really helpful. And so all I need to do to change between them is basically go like this. C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. So basically what I have right now is I have custom mode one set up as our mountain bike mode. Custom mode two is like talking to the camera. Number three is slow-mo. And so if I wanted to put this under my chin and go into mountain bike mode, C1. Put on C1, and then if I want to talk to the camera, C2. Pull it off, talk to the camera. Then if I wanted to take a slow-mo of April hitting a jump or something, then I just go like this. C1, C2, C3. So now I'm in slow-mo. I can do the slow-mo, and then if I want to get back into mountain bike mode, C1. Boom, click it on, and I'm off and running. So that alone is awesome. I have five custom modes set. I think you can set at least eight that I know of. I'm not sure exactly the number, but I'll check on that and put it right here. Another thing that's really impressive with this is that over the last few weeks, I've not had one single overheating issue or any bugs. It's just worked every time, all the footage turned out good, and I've been super stoked on that part. So this next love is a hardware one, and it is amazing, honestly. So this is the battery bank that it came with in the combo. And essentially it has these three batteries here, and you can tell right here, this one is not charged, this one in the middle has a medium charge, and the green one is ready to go. It allows me to see what battery is charged to what level. That is huge. I'll show you what the GoPro one looks like instead. So this is the one I use for the GoPro. It doesn't have any lights on it, it doesn't tell you what it is. So to check and see what this battery is at, you have to basically just put it in the camera, turn it on, see what it's at, pull it out, take out the next one. And uh, yeah, it's just a giant pain. So again, kind of going back to the theme, the DJI is definitely the most easy to use and enjoyable camera I've ever used. It's just fun to make videos with and it's just like a pleasure to use, honestly. So that's the biggest thing that I love about this camera. So that is my list of loves and now it's time for what I wish was better to make this camera perfect, in my opinion. So the most simple and kind of most annoying is the record button. So with the GoPro, it has this really big record button that you can press off axis and it still works. So you can hear the clicks. It's got good haptic feedback. With the DJI, it's much more difficult to press than a GoPro one. Um, for one, the spring is quite a bit stiffer and the button press is actually only in the center of the record button, whereas the GoPro has kind of this bigger flat spot and you can press it off angle. With this one, if you don't press it right on the money, it's not recording at all. You have to make sure you press right in the center and it's quite a bit stiffer. For me personally, that wasn't a huge issue because I'm able kind of just to push it with my thumb. But for April, when she had gloves on, it was really hard for her to press this and know if she actually got it. And so there's a lot of times where I'd have to press it for her just because she wasn't able to feel it and she wasn't able to like actually press it with her gloves on. But to be fair, a little workaround for that if you can't press the button easily is you can just go like this. Start recording. Stop recording. So that makes it easy too, if you don't have the ability to button press, but if they just made that a little bit better, it would be better. Another thing that I wish was better with this camera is I wish it had as good a stabilization as the GoPro. I feel like it's 90 to 95% there, but the GoPro does have better stabilization, especially when low light situations do happen. There's times where the whole screen on this will kind of jitter for a second. The GoPro just seems to be better in that sense. With that being said though, there is a setting in here called electronic image stabilization priority in low light. And so what that does 
is it basically cranks the ISO up higher, maintains a higher shutter speed, allows for the stabilization to work better. Um, but still, even with that being said, I don't think the stabilization is quite on par with the GoPro, but it is fairly close. And I'm hoping with different firmware updates, it can get better because in the last three weeks that I've owned this camera, it's gotten three firmware updates and each time it's made the camera incrementally better. So I am curious to see if they can compete with them head to head, but it's not quite there yet. And last but not least, the thing that I really wish would change the most with this camera, if it could sync directly to this microphone, Bluetooth, it would be a game changer. This does have the ability to basically with this door, you can pop it open and hook up a USB-C mic. So you can theoretically attach the USB-C mic unit to this and then use a lav mic like the DJI mic. Sometimes when you do use this USB-C mic adapter, I've had it kind of jiggle loose and then have some electrical interference sounds when you're recording. But if it could just do it Bluetooth and you could just throw this on, I think that would be enough to make the decision easy for a lot of people because you'd have really high quality audio, it's already baked into the camera, and then the recording tracks is done. Um, but like I said, it's pretty good when we use a foam wind slayer like we did out on the trail. So if you use something like this, the audio is pretty good. But DJI, if this, which you already make, could connect directly to this, that would be phew, game changer for mountain bike stuff, game changer for POV footage. I think it'd be awesome. So that's what I wish more than anything would happen. All right, so with all that being said, what is my final opinion on the DJI Osmo Action 4? To be fair, I think they knocked it out of the park on this one. They've created a true GoPro competitor where it's easier to use, it's more fun to use, there's less issues, there's less bugs, it lasts longer battery, it doesn't have any overheating, um, it's quicker, it has better custom modes, it has pretty much the same image quality for the most part. For most people, it'd be just the same. This one is just gonna be $399 how it is, you don't have to pay the subscription fee, you don't have to do any of that weird stuff. If you didn't own an action cam now, it'd be really difficult for me to explain why buying a GoPro would be worth it over this. I think it's just a really good option and I'm stoked to be able to try it out and test it. And uh, I know for us, we will definitely use this as our primary camera moving forward, just because I love, I love using it. And that's something I couldn't say about the GoPro. I've had so many frustrations in the past and uh, I'm just ready to have fun and go riding and capture it and be able to share it easily. And the DJI app is just as good or better than the GoPro. So overall, I think they did a great job. And yeah, I can't thank them enough for sending us a couple cameras to test out. If you have any other questions or if there's anything I missed or you're curious about, throw it down in the comments below. There also should be a link in the description and in the comments um, to their website with all the information on this. I just wanted to give you kind of my opinion and my loves and hates. Like I said, overall, there's not a lot to hate about this camera. But if they could just make a microphone that attached Bluetooth, I'd be so stoked and it would be 100% don't buy anything else, just get this camera. And uh, other than that, I feel like everything else is so good. And if you have a GoPro 11 already, I don't know if it'd be worth trading out, but if you're in the market for a camera or if you're a few generations back, this thing is so awesome and it's only gonna get better with firmware updates. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you get out and go ride some bikes and I uh, will talk to you later. See ya.